most of the videos online that address powering your linear actuator for your plasma cutter use uh, DC power, uh, usually from a discarded uh, DC drill, battery powered. I didn't have one. I didn't want to buy a new one and cut it up. So I tried to, to come up with a cheaper alternative just using AC. So what I've got in this setup is I have a variable speed controller, at, which I only paid like 20 bucks, a $29 drill from Harbor Freight, and a $25 digital tachometer. The AC motor controller does not adjust low enough to turn my drill at a slower RPM so that my travel speed for my linear actuator is such that I can do thicker cuts of steel. Let me show you what I had to do to remedy this problem. On the back, there's four screws. Remove these four screws and take a little tiny screwdriver, stick it inside, just gently pry on it. Open it up, and you can fold it back this way. You have some more room to, to work on it. Inside, there is a what appears to be a trim pot. With it unplugged, of course, you can turn the screw clockwise to slow the, the RPM down. So what I did is I moved it about five degrees with a sweet spot on mine. So I got it probably down to about 450, which is what I needed. Here's a demonstration of the speed. This is normal drill without variable control. And this is all the way down. You get pretty surprised with it. To turn the torch on and off, I have this single pole, single throw, momentary switch. The drill is turned sideways because it has controls that you need, just like you'd have on a panel if you made anything that was a little fancier. Uh, of course, you got a lock, you got forward and reverse, and of course, you got speed control. This tachometer has an infrared laser that reflects off this piece of reflective tape that came with it so you can set the RPM to the speed that you need. The cool thing about using this is that over time if your drill starts getting a little slower or your linear actuator is a little, a little stiffer, uh, you can compensate for it by RPM. Whenever possible I like to use obtainium, which are parts that are left over from previous projects. To hold the torch and do the torch height adjustment, I have a Picatinny rail that has been machined down and slotted so that it can move up and down for the torch height adjustment. <clears throat> to put the torch on and off, you have the quick disconnect. The only thing I had to modify is I had to take and remove a little bit of material off of this so I'd clamp the uh, torch tighter. These bars over here with the slots in them gives you an infinitely adjustable location for the handle. I have these from my previous projects, these are fender scribes. This is a soft tail, probably soft tail horn bracket. So if you put on a different torch or something, you know, all you gotta do is uh, really loosen up this bolt right here and move it around till you get the proper height. Here's a shot of the torch inside the holder. As I mentioned before, this bolt can be loosened to for different torch heights, actually different torches, but you'll need to loosen it and for each height adjustment you do. And I have the obligatory redneck retainer slash zip tie. I know someone's gonna ask with this black Looks like a pulley down here is four. This is so when I'm feeding out cable that it goes out nice and smooth and I don't have to pay too much attention to it. Just make sure it keeps in the rubber track. Let me show you how this works. I 
and way backwards. It'll just shoot stuff back off. This rubber roller is for the front of a uh, boat trailer to catch the bow when you tie it down. It's only about four or five dollars. All thread, some bearings, good to go.